Well, welcome to Johnny Ray's Backwoods Guns. Today we're going to build some 6.5 Creed ammo. I'm going to uh, blow your mind with this heart pounding, adrenaline pumping, uh, reloading video today on how I build my ammo. I've got some new toys to help me, uh, a jig, a three-way cutter, I got some Winchester brass we want to convert. Guys, stick around, it should be exciting. All right, guys, this is my components. I've got Hornady brass. I've got Hodgkin H4350 powder, which is harder than hell to find. I've got some Magnum rifle primers, large rifle Magnum primer CC250s. And I've got some Hornady SST 129 grain um, uh, bullets. These are hunting bullets. These aren't match grade bullets. These aren't for match uh, shooting accuracy. They're for hunting. All right, of course, I look it up in my Hornady book. Slide down here to the H4350, slide over, it says max load charge is 42.8. I'm going to try to stay right here at 40, uh, this 42. I'm going to shoot 42. The reason why is I've got some Winchester brass that I'm going to convert to uh, 6.5 Creed. And the uh, Winchester brass, the volume, won't be the same as Hornady brass. So uh, I'm going to stay under max charges till I shoot this, check for pressure signs, and then maybe I'll ladder up. But let's get to the loading process. Well, actually, let's convert our brass first, and then we'll get to the loading process. Stick around. All right, I'm gonna start out with a piece of uh, Winchester 243 brass, okay? I got this reloading, um, I got this jig cut out for 243 uh, brass, so it'll fit in my uh, Harbor Freight saw, my cutoff saw. And what this is doing, this is uh, cutting this right at 194, okay? So then when I fire form it, or um, resize it, it'll come out the right length. Uh, Reloading 3D made me these uh, jigs, okay? This is for my 300 Black. This is for my uh, six, 243 Winchester to convert to a 6.5 Creed. Uh, great company. I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. It's a father-son company. They... Um, they do real good work. So all I'll do is turn my chop saw on. There you have it, guys. Uh, I know that looks a little funny right now, but it'll fire form out in just a minute. All right, let's go to uh, forming it, sizing it. Be right back. Step is forming this brass, okay? I'm going to take me some case lube. This Hornady uh, unique case lube, it reminds you a lot of the Imperial sizing case lube, okay? It's real good stuff, it's $5, all right, at Cabela's. I lube it. Now, my first step on my sizing uh, die is I'm gonna take my decapping pin out. And, uh, and like I said, I'm gonna take my decapping pin out. Um, this usually sizes the inside of your mouth, and this size the outside, but since I'm forming, I just want to work the brass from one side. So I run it up about halfway, back it down. This is so I don't crush your shoulder, okay guys? This is so I don't crush your shoulder. All right, now I'll reinsert my decapping pin, which I don't care, I've already decapped on my universal decapping, but die from Lee. But I'm gonna run this up and size the neck now. I've got a 287 bushing in these match grade dies, so it'll get that neck just right. Okay, now let's trim this brass. Okay, usually when I trim brass, I insert my uh, 6.5 pilot here, run this down, and put this in my uh, Lyman case jig, and it'll spin, and these cutter blades cut it. But I've noticed when I use my chop saw and I cut it off, it don't always cut it off level. And then when I stick this down on my trimming pilot, it doesn't do the best job, okay? So I went back to this uh, lay trimming press um, that Hornady makes, all right? And what I did was they've, uh, RCBS has come out with a three-way cutter, all right? I've got a uh, pilot for the 22, the 6.5, 
and the 30 cal. And I just changed my pilot there, okay? Uh, but this chafes, deburrs, and trims. So I've already set up the depth. I just lock it in, and then I turn this until it quits cutting. And why it's cutting, it's chafing and deburring. Which, honestly, guys, this is the... Uh, this is the shit, all right? This is probably one of the best reloading tools I've ran across in forever. I believe it's done. Let me check the length on this. 1916. As long as I'm under 1920, then I think I'm, I'm good. 192 is your trim length, and they say to trim it to 191000, but I'm just trimming it right under 192. Uh, if you notice, on my uh, the jaws of my digital caliper, I have uh, made little marks. That way, every time I size my brass, check the measurements on it, whatnot, I try to line this mark in the center and this mark in the center. Okay, these jaws will get sprung sometimes on these digital calipers, so you want to watch out for that. Okay, these aren't uh, the $200 ones; these are the $40, $50 ones. So. They're not going to be exact, 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 okay? They're not going to be dead on balls accurate. They're just going to be real close to accurate. But anyway, let's get on to uh, the rest of my brass. All right, our next step is I'm going to clean these primer pockets out, guys. Um, so I'm going to use this. Uh, I'm going to use this primer pocket uniformer. This cuts the depth just right, and then I'm going to use this primer pocket brush. Okay, I don't have to de. Uh, de I don't have to deburr or chafe, chafe or deburr. So let's get with this. Now I'll give you a little tip on uh, on doing this brass. I got some rubber coated pliers here so I can hold onto the brass without hurting my fingers, without dropping shit everywhere. Okay. So I just hold it down. I go over to the brush. Hold it down. Put a little pressure on it. If you can see that Winchester brass, it looks perfect. It's shaped, it's deburred, the trim length's right, primer pocket's right, the brass isn't scratched up. Um, it's, it's it's just as good as what you can buy. All right, let's go to uh, priming powder. All right, next step is priming. I'm gonna use these 250 uh, CCI primers. I'm going to use my universal flaring die. I'm going to do these two, both these steps the same same time. All right, I already dropped a large uh, Magnum rifle primer in there. All right, I'm going to prime right off the press. Okay, now I'm going to use my flaring die as I go up to flare the mouth. This way, my uh, brass um, is set up to uh, it's all primed and it's flared. So if I want to use flat base bullets or boat tail bullets, I'm ready. Um, Hornady makes VMAX bullets, they used to, uh, I'm, I think, they, I'm sure they still do, but they're flat base, so this will get them with, ready for flat base or boat tail, I don't know what you're going to load guys, and that primer just fits in there perfect when you use those RCBS uh, primer pocket uniform cutting tools, uh, they uh, cut the depth just perfect on those primer pockets, and you get a nice seat with that primer. All right, guys, let's go on to the uh, powder, and, and then we'll go to the up for 41.8. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to throw 42 grain. Um, as we all know, these Hornady uh, scales, they throw great, great, uh, accurate, and consistent powder charges. But all the Hornady scales, they're just, they're awful. They're awful. They don't... Um, they, they're not very consistent. They like to drift. They like to jump. Um, it's just a pain in the ass, these Hornady scales. I don't even know why they sell the damn things, what's the truth. That's why I always go over here and check on a set of uh, RCBS scales. Okay, guys, that's why I always go and check on my RCBS scales or another set of scales, a second set of scales. That's, that was supposed to be 42. So all I'm going to do is trickle up till I get 42. One or two more kernels of powder should do it. Usually on this stick powder, about five kernels is uh, 
uh, a tenth of grain. So the, there's 42. I'm just going to double check, lift up, let it stabilize, set it back down. 42. All right, guys, that's good enough for me. I'll uh, do the rest of them off camera and we'll go to seating. All right, today, since I'm loading these Hornady 6.5 Creed, they invented this round. Of course, the 6.5 bullet's been around since damn John F. Kennedy got shot. All right, but they, about 2008, 2009, they came out with this 6.5 Creed more. And uh, these bullets have a really long O job on them. Um, so I'm using a Hornady die today. I'm using the uh, micro precision uh, micrometer uh, seating uh, measure. It uh, pushes your seating stem down. And the good thing about the Hornady seating stems, they've got three or four you can get for different for the their ELD bullets, their uh, SST bullets, whichever one fits the best. I picked the one that fit the best. But this is that's got a really seat. A really good long way guys so let's do two or three and let's get this seating depth right let me check it I'm shooting for two six um, well right on that cantaloupe line is two six one three so let's just call it two six one and that's good because I only used 42 grain of powder instead of 43. So um, I left myself a little room. That should be right. Let's see these other uh, two and then we'll, uh, we'll crimp. I like the way that feels. Well, it's a damn good looking bullet. All right, this is the last one. You notice where that candler line is, that's a good, you know, three eighths of an inch. The bottom of this uh, Hornady die has like a self centering uh, flange there that try, tries to help line it up and keep it straight. Damn, it looks good. All right, let's uh, let's crimp these and we'll be done. All right, next is my crimp. I already set my crimp and die up. I'm just putting a real light crimp on these. So it's just a simple run it up and down. Of course, you know, these are a collet style crimp. So if you uh, stand over top of it, you can look down and you can see the collet squeeze together and put a crimp on it. See that squeeze? So uh, that's all you need. I used an eight, uh, 287 neck sizing bushing, which is going to uh, really squeeze that neck down. Uh, so there's probably, there's plenty of neck tension, neck pressure there. I just like crimping when there's a cantaloupe line on my bullets. Um, all right, guys, let's, let's uh, conclude this video off. All right, guys, that's how I uh, build my 6.5 Creeds. I um, started converting this brass over of course, this is 243 Winchester Brass. I did a video on it, my last video, how I converted it, but I didn't have this jig. I did have those RCBS three-way cutters. The RCBS three-way cutters been around a while. You can order them off RCBS. They're, uh, they're one of the neatest, best ideals yet to really save time, especially when you're uh, forming a lot of brass, converting a lot of brass from one chamber to another. It really gets that that neck trimmed right a consistent length every single time. Not saying the Lee is uh, obsolete because the Lee, I love it on just normal uh, brass. But when I convert brass, I really like to get that first size just, just dead on. Plus this uh, little jig I used to cut my 243 brass. Before I was putting a little mark on my brass and um, I was putting a little mark and then trying to cut it with my chop saw and it was just cutting the the end off at an angle you know I couldn't just get it in there and get it locked up these really lock the size in perfect you can hold it real good you can set your depth um, this company that made this it's called reloading 3d uh, it's a I think it's a father-son company I'm sure it's family oriented company but I called this guy or I didn't call him I sent him a message on eBay 1 30 in the morning I figured he'd get back with me the next day 
He sent me a message like 20 minutes later. said, yes, I sell these. I'll make you one. I'll have it in the mail tomorrow. I got this thing Thursday. I sent him a message on Tuesday night. Uh, great company to work with. These things are just the handiest little jig. I think it was $10. Get one, it'll save you a lot of trouble. It'll help you form your brass really fast. They make them for 300 blackout. They make them for uh, 10, 15 different chambers, okay? I'm gonna get him to make me one so I can turn AK into 6.5 Grendel. I've been doing that, but I've been doing it, locking it in my vice. I'd rather have a jig. But anyway, there you have it, guys. Uh, another 6.5 Creedmoor video. Um, I'll finish the rest of these up in a little bit. I just didn't want to take up your time on the camera. Um, most of these videos, I get a lot of, a lot of times people come in my shop and they say, John, I really liked your video, except you didn't explain this good enough. You didn't explain this deep enough. And then I'll make a video an hour long and I'll get people come in here and say, John, I loved your video, but it's too long. Okay, I don't know whether to make them short, make them long, whatnot. Okay, I haven't made a video for a month. All right, we've had a bunch of uh, Second Amendment uh, questions coming up with this Florida shooting. Uh, it's an awful tragic thing. Someone does something like that. But uh, so I'm saying, guys, um, this Florida shooting kind of put a damper on my uh, reloading videos for two or three weeks. I thought maybe um, the climate wasn't the right time to produce these on making 223556 ammo. Uh, so. <laughs> I uh, threw out a 6.5 Creed. I waited a couple weeks. I didn't want to. YouTube, Facebook, Google, they all filter us. They all got us throttle back. You can't say the word uh, detonate or the word explosive five or six times in one video without them flagging it. Okay, guys, uh, they're coming after our guns. You guys got to uh, call your congressmen and senators and voice your opinion on your Second Amendment rights because uh, the only rights you're going to keep are the one, ones you're willing to fight for. With that said, I'm not getting too political. You guys know how I feel. Um, plus, I wanted to yell at my, uh, I had a phone call the other day from Manitoba, Canada. A bunch of guys called me, or one guy called me, he said a bunch of his friends and him watched my videos. I appreciate you guys. And uh, that was the video for today. But before you leave, uh, have a little drink on me. All right, you guys, um, Make sure you watch my next video. I'm done reloading, so I'm and I'm a full, I'm a grown ass man, so I figure I can have a drink if I want to. You guys have a great evening. I tell you, I don't know how it's going to play out in a nationwide, but in a pro gun state like West Virginia, and a lot of our boys fought in the military and go to the military. I don't know, uh, I think it'll hurt them. Uh, I really do. I think it's going to be tough uh, uh, justifying how you want, you expect a 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old to go join the military, an 18, 19 year old join the police department and protect our, con our country, protect our community. But then you won't sell them a uh, pistol and their, you know, or a gun, rifle, shotgun, whatnot, because they went 21 and up, right? All 21 now. Right, and do you think the age restriction is a bigger deal than even the decision not to sell AR-15s and assault style rifles? Well, yeah, I think the 18, 19, 20, because you can't pick and choose these 18, 19, 20 year old civil liberties. You know, you, you can't, you're cherry picking. You know, you want them to go vote for the president. You want them to go fight the war. You want them to protect the community. You don't want them to buy liquor. You want them to pay taxes. You know, you've got to treat, when do you say these 18 year olds are adults or these 21 year olds are adults? Make your mind up. So I think a lot of people are going to have uh, an issue with, with it. The AR market itself has been a little slow since Trump got elected. There's no scare in, you know, being banned until this incident. And, and so I don't think Dick's and Field Streams actually given up a lot. Um, I think the AR market was saturated. But it's still, uh, it's still a good market. It's the number one most popular rifle in America. Um, can I ask how many, do you, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine. <clears throat> but how many probably do you sell over the course of the year? Uh, a good 50. Okay. So a few a month, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, some stores, I, I'm a small, small store. I don't want to try to 
uh, see being one. You know, I'm sure there's a um, Borders is a big store in Ashland. I'm sure they sell 200. You know, that's an they're an independent store now. A Cabela's or a Fuel Stream, I, big chains like that. I don't know how many they sell. They have the power of, of advertising, credit cards, reward programs. So, sure. uh, do you think Fuel and Stream not selling it at the mall will make a difference to your store here? I hope so, because when they open, they put a real big hurt on me. You know, corporate, when Royal King opened in Ashland, you know, any corporate place, you know, when Walmart quit selling uh, military style weapons, you know, assault weapon is when you hold the trigger in, it keeps firing. Uh, semi matic is when you work the trigger, one pull, one, one shot. When they quit selling the AR 15, uh, my business got better. And they don't sell pistols, so that helps. Um. Do you think this is the start of anything, or do you think this is just one corporation's decision? You know, I, I've seen a lot of corporations pulling away from the NRA. I don't think you want to um, go to war with the number one special interest group in America, um, and especially a pro-gun state like this, uh, and a pro-gun country like this. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see it just like and bump stocks are trying to, they're trying to ban accessories. You know the old saying, once you let them get the foot in the door, you get the leg in the door, and they're So, um, I'm sure they're going to try to come up with more bans, and uh, I don't know if they'll get passed. Um, you know, tradition, traditional politics, we talk about it, we don't do anything about it. Are you worried this is the start of something, or do you think? Well, being in gun business, my livelihood, sure, sure, it weighs on me. Uh, you know, I never saw this coming. I didn't think it would happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've been wrong before, so, sure, I'm worried. Um, you said you never saw, like, dicks, basically? Right, right. I never, never saw, saw a big, you know, that, it's the number one popular, most popular rifle, uh, 223-556 ammo, number one rifle selling ammo. Uh, the rifles are, are the most popular. If you go to the range on the weekends, Throughout the summer, you no one shoots a rifle except for the AR. I mean, there's pistols and rifles. Now, hunt season, all the hunting guns come out, and then they, everybody puts them up. And so, no, I, I, I figured they would be afraid to ban these or afraid to quit selling these because of loss of, of business. Even though Walmart said it once, but people sure, Walmart did it two years ago, I believe. Um, is there anything else important you'd like to say? You know, if they don't respect the Second Amendment, I, then and they're going to discount the Second Amendment. What stops them from discounting the First Amendment? You know, or the Fifth, right to a lawyer. You know, the Eighth, right to not be tortured while you're sitting in waiting on due process. Uh, you know, it's a law of the land. I mean, until they change the law, we all go out. Uh, I don't, I don't understand why it's so hard for them to see that. I guess you know. You well, know, I mean, private businesses can do. I mean, some people have like no shirt, no shoes, no shirt, no service. I mean, that's not the Constitution, but you know, you can make. But these big corporations are in business to make big money, and that's why they invest. I'm sure Dick's filtering. I'm sure they got fifty million dollars for the inventory. Ever. You don't stick fifty million dollars with the inventory somewhere and not expect to make money, uh, and that's what they're in business to do. Uh, so, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I. Do you think would you boycott? Dicks and oh, I'm not going to walk in Dicks or Field of Dream, you know. Uh, I mean, not, obviously not to buy a gun. No, I've walked in there in the last two, three weeks and bought shorts, bought tennis shoes. I'll never go back. You know, just like Starbucks, just like Target. Uh, you know, they don't support our military. They're international companies. You know, I don't, I don't give them my business. So you won't go back? No, I'll, I won't walk in Field of Dream. You're going to deny an 18, 19, 20 year old. If he gets married, he's got a wife and kid. He can't protect his family. You know, the small crime level the way it is in our town right now, and you're not, you're going to die and right, protect his family. You know, and what you're doing, you're developing a black market. Just like you know, how the cigarettes are hundred dollars a carton in New York. They're eighty dollars, seventy dollars a carton down here. People come down here and buy them, go over and try to sell. When you start banning 18, 19, 20 year olds, you're just uh, promoting a, a black market.
you think there's a lot of other people that won't shop there anymore? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The shooting community, you know, I'm on ground zero the shooting community. Uh, you know, competition shooters come in here, hunters come in here, reloaders come in here, home defense, concealed carry, we teach concealed carry uh, classes. We, we've got our, our finger on the pulse of the shooting community in this area. And everybody's, I've had 25 phone calls this morning. Can you believe this, Johnny? What do you think? What do you think? You think they'll discount them? I don't know. You know, uh, Walmart, they discounted theirs and they sold them for nothing. I mean, nothing when they got rid of their, their ARs. Cool. Anything else you'd like to say? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. you all coming in. And, and uh, hey, Tom. Well, no, I, it's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I we actually ran into a mom who went there specifically to buy stuff today because she was screwing it. And I, it's fine. I also know there's a lot of people that won't be there today because of that sort of thing. So. Yeah. So